You clumsy fool. I'm sorry, sir. I am fed up with your rages and everything else. Then get a divorce. But don't think you're going to walk away with any of my money, because I'll fight. Excuse me, Father. I wanted to say good night. Good night. Mother? Good night, Jennifer. After I put Jennifer to bed, I'm going into town for the evening. Come on, darling. I wanted to get to the office early in order to go over some briefs. It was the kind of day that would be hours too short for all the work I had to do. I thought I'd be the first one in. I was in for a surprise. How do you do, Mr. Maris? My name is Jennifer Vaughn. I'd like to retain you for a case, please. Could you get in? The janitor. I said you were expecting me. It's terribly important, Mr. Maris. You have a legal problem? Not me. I want to help my mother. My stepmother, really. Only I don't consider her my stepmother. Because when you say stepmother, there's a connotation that you don't love her as much as your real mother. And I do. Help her how? To get her released from prison. She's serving a life sentence for murdering my father. Vaughn. Is your stepmother Dorothy Vaughn? Yes, sir. I wonder how you help get so many innocent people out of prison. I brought what money I had in my bank. A little over eight dollars. I'll get more. Was this all your idea? Yes, sir. I know the case is officially closed. But it can always be reopened on the strength of new evidence. Can't it? Do you have any new evidence? I think so, Mr. Maris. What makes you think these might have some bearing on the case? Do you remember how the police claimed it was an inside job because there was nothing to show the house had been broken into? Yes. Well, the police have been known to be wrong, haven't they? I mean, isn't it possible these might be clues proving that somebody did break into the house that night? A man's rubber heel. Worn down the rear portion, indicating he was heavy set. A bent screwdriver. You should give me the window. Found in bushes nearby. Shreds of cloth. Found in same bushes. Obviously torn loose as the murderer was fleeing the scene of the crime. Well, Jennifer, you obviously have great powers of deduction, but tell me one thing. When did you find these? Over the past few months. But the murder happened over a year ago, didn't it? Oh, I've been working on the case for some time, Mr. Mirror. I never did believe my stepmother was guilty. But now, with this new evidence... Jennifer, I doubt if there's any connection, but I can turn them over to the police. Good morning, Casey. What? How many? Press conference. Mr. Maris, I forgot to tell you, Mr. Maris. I promised the newspapers a statement on the new evidence we're going to use to reopen the case. I... I thought it would stimulate public interest. Press conference. Casey, you tell them it was a mistake. I am not handling the Vaughn case. Now look here, Jennifer. You went a little bit too far. I'm sorry, Mr. Maris. I didn't mean any harm. I only wanted to help my stepmother. 
No, I, I'm sure you didn't mean any harm. I wish I could help you, Jennifer, but... Look, I promised to turn these clues over to the police. That's fair, isn't it? Have you had breakfast? No, sir, but I'd better be getting home. I left before Lisa was awake. She might be worried. Well, who's Lisa? Miss Swanson. She used to be my governess, but the court made her my temporary guardian. Well, I'd better call her. That's very kind of you. Yes, I'll be waiting for her. Goodbye. We don't have to go and look for her. She went to see Herbert Maris. He's sending her home in a cab. The lawyer? What would she want to see him about? He didn't say. And I didn't want to ask any questions. You don't suppose she's told him anything? I have, John. Exactly one move all night. Hmm. Let me concentrate, will you? We need your wire. If you really, truly wish you could help me, imperative you come to my house tomorrow after 3 p.m., Jennifer Vaughn. Uh, may I see that? Huh? Yeah. Uh, you really know this Vaughn kid? <laughs> she uh, came to see me last week. For a second there, I thought you were needling me. You know, I was on the Vaughn case. The kid Deli drove me to a nervous breakdown. Oh, how do you mean? Oh, the way she tried to take over. Telling me how to look for clues. Giving out interviews that we were handling the case all wrong. Calling me up a dozen times a day with a lot of weird theories. That kid's really something. What does she want to see you about, anyway? She trying to get more publicity? Well, she, uh, she didn't notify the papers, but she wanted me to help her step on it. Oh, don't you believe it, huh? That kid testified that the Vaughns have been battling ever since the day they got married. The butler, the governess, and even the kid admitted that they were ready to murder each other that night. Vaughn stormed upstairs and went to bed, and that's the last time anybody saw him alive, except for the murderer. Was Mrs. Vaughn the only suspect? Uh, the only one that made any sense. There was a gallon can of gasoline missing from the garage, as I remember it. There was mud on her slippers and traces of gasoline on the robe, and the sash was scorched. You know, it's a funny thing, Herm. The first Mrs. Vaughn died in a fire at the Mountain Lodge three years ago. She was recuperating from an illness. The coroner ruled it accidental death. But do you know who that nurse was? A woman named Dorothy Foster. She married Mr. Vaughn a year later and became the kid's stepmother. What a terrible thing for Jennifer. Losing both parents that way. Yeah. Although I got the impression that she didn't get much love from either one of them. How would you like to go down and check this thing out with me, Yvonne? Oh, listen. <laughs> if that's supposed to be a joke, it's not even funny. I'm serious. Listen, I work my way up the hard way. I'll go back to pounding a beat before I voluntarily get involved with that kid again. Check me. <laughs> Kid even ruined my chess game. Yes, sir. My name is Herbert Maris. Jennifer's expecting. Me. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Maris. She's not at home. I don't expect her until this evening. Perhaps I can help you. I'm Taylor, the houseman. Maybe you can. Jennifer sent me this. I'm so ashamed of that child. Taking advantage of your good nature, Mr. Maris. The incredible things that she'll do to try and get attention. You mean there's nothing to that? She did mention something about wanting to ask you to be guest speaker at some school function. Miss Swanson and I thought we talked her out of it. Oh, thank you. Hi, Mary. Hope I haven't kept you waiting. Hi. No, 
know. As a matter of fact, I just got here. I thought you were taking Jennifer for her dancing lessons. You know that, smile, Taylor. Mr. Maris, I want you to meet my guardian, Miss Swanson. Miss Swanson? Mr. Say. Maris? About this wire, Jennifer, I'm afraid that it is a school function. School? Don't be silly. I found something yesterday when I was exploring out back. I'm sure it's a tremendous clue. Isn't it simply fantastic that I found it after all this time? Do you know what it is, Mr. Mary? A gasoline container? The, the missing container. The one the police could never find. This is the one we had in our garage. It isn't, Jennifer, and you know it. For heaven's sake, Taylor, don't touch it. It might have the real murderer's fingerprints on it. That's why I tied on the cord. Yes, of course, Taylor. That was very clever of you, Jennifer, dear. Mr. Maris, I am hereby entrusting this evidence to your protective custody. Shall we call the police? Little Jennifer Vaughn, whose criticism of the police was so outspoken at the time of their investigation into the murder of her father, claims to have come up with a new clue that will reopen the case. I asked the editor to please wait until tonight's edition, Lieutenant. Honest! You shouldn't have said anything to the papers, Jennifer. I'm sorry, but it may be true about the container, Lieutenant. Look! That's where I found it. Just a corner was sticking up. My theory is, if Dorothy really was the murderer, I took the gasoline container upstairs, started the fire, then why would she come all the way back out here to bury it? Well, kid, don't you have to take a nap or something? Uh-uh. I don't take naps anymore, Lieutenant. Anyhow, I'm too excited. Don't you think it might be a good idea to tear up this whole backyard? Yeah, maybe we can get all the TV stations to carry it. Well, couldn't it be true about the container? No, kid, I told you there were no prints on it. Are you positive? I mean, shouldn't you take it down to your crime lab? The police know their business, Jennifer. If they could do anything, they'd say so. Let's go, Evan. You meant well, Jennifer. But listen to me, sweetie. Searching for clues is a very unhealthy pastime for a little girl. You ought to be playing with your dolls. Now, do me a favor, will you? Forget about it. play with Bill, she probably sticks voodoo pins in him. You could be wrong about it. What do you know about her guardians? Well, she asked the court to let her stay with Miss Swanson. Taylor works there, and their salaries and expenses are paid out of the trust fund by the court. Why? I don't know. I have the feeling that Swanson and Taylor have some kind of unhealthy influence on her. All right, Jennifer. You've had your little fun. But it's all over now, understand? The case is closed. You so much as attempt to see Mr. Maris again, and I swear, I'll see that you're sent to the Margate School for the Emotionally Disturbed. I won't go. I'll run away. Maybe we'll have to see that you can't run away. You know those nightmares and headaches you've been having? They might get worse. I wanted to talk to Jennifer again, someplace where she'd be away from the influence and possibly the fear of her guardian. I went to her school, but she wasn't there. Uh, how am I supposed to get any work done if I have to sit around waiting for you? I wouldn't have asked you to come down here if it wasn't urgent. Uh, is it that Vaughn kid? Swanson and Taylor, mostly. Well, did you find out what the dark evil influence is? No, except I'm even more sure now that it exists. I just talked to the executives of the Vaughn estate. Miss Swanson has requested permission to take Jennifer to Europe. Claims she has nightmares living in that house, wants to give her a change of environment. The executors of the Vaughn estate have agreed to finance the trip to the trust fund, and the juvenile court has given it's okay. They leave next week. <laughs> you know, uh, that's the best news I've heard in a long time. Now maybe I'll be able to concentrate on my chess game tomorrow night. John, I'm afraid it's off. That's the reason I want to see it. What? I've got to fly up to women's prison to see Mrs. Vaughn. While I'm gone, I wonder if you might check to see if there isn't some way we could delay their trip. Sure. But listen, if I find out anything... I'll cable you from Paris, because if that kid doesn't leave the country, I will. I told the truth, Mr. Mara. I didn't leave the house. 
As for the mud and gasoline on my robe and slippers, I assume whoever started the fire arranged that. You see, I thought I knew who was in that garage. I thought George and Lisa Swanson were having an affair. I got up and got dressed and went to her room to wait for her. Did you have proof? Articles that belonged to her. The compact, her photo, a handkerchief found in George's possession. You found them? No. Jennifer did. Did Jennifer like Miss Swanson? Of course she did. She ingratiated herself to the child and catered to her. I felt she needed psychiatric aid and some good, sound discipline. I forgot all about love. And she needed that more than anything else. Thanks, pal. Thanks a lot. Something tells me that thanks isn't exactly sincere. Well, now that you mention it, Herm, little Jennifer called in today to invite me to a formal going away party. She said you already accepted. I wanted the chance to talk to her again. Once they leave, they're out of your jurisdiction. Oh, yeah. The point is, they're holding something back. Whatever the secret is, the answer lies with the people in that house. I think the child knows. I'm afraid to reveal it. I'll tell you what, Herb. I've already begged off, but I think you'll be able to handle that kid a lot better alone. So I'll drive you over there. And I'll wait outside, just in case the kid tries to run away. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Maris. Miss Fox, good evening. Mr. Maris, Mr. Maris. I'm so glad you could come, Mr. Maris. How handsome you look. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. You look lovely tonight. I just love grown-up parties, don't you? They're so, so gay, Hello. Hello. What newspaper? Oh, that's for me. Excuse me, Mr. Maris. Hello. Yes, this is she. Well, could you send at least one reporter and photographer? Oh, I see. Well, may I give you a statement, please? You can quote me as saying, even though I'll be in Europe. I've made arrangements so that the search for my father's murderer will continue. Do you have all that? What? Why, of course it would be better to stay here. I don't want to go to Europe at all. Well, too bad you can't cover my dinner party. It's going to be lovely. Well... Bye. Jennifer, dear, you shouldn't have said you don't want to go to Europe. Remember, it was your suggestion in the first place. Yes, of course. I forgot. Dinner is served. Thank you, Taylor. Shall we, Mr. Maris? Jennifer, dear, do remember to mind your manners. Aren't you joining us, Miss Swanson? No. I thought it would be more fun for you and Jennifer this way, Mr. Maris. Lieutenant Weston was sorry he couldn't make it tonight. He has a great deal of respect for you. He's never shown it. Oh, you've got to understand it. He acts tough, but he really isn't that way at all. He admitted to me that you came up with some pretty good clues. I tried to help Mr. Maris. In a way, it's a shame you're leaving the country. I understand that you were becoming quite a local celebrity. Oh, you have no idea how much publicity I received, Mr. Maris. Not just locally. Really? I didn't know that. Oh, yes. Why, my picture was on the front page of all the important newspapers. And I was mentioned in the news magazines for months. Oh, and I appeared on television. And there were two stories about me in True Case History Detective Magazine. And I was interviewed by an important syndicated columnist. I even got fan mail. How wonderful. Oh, it's too bad it's all over. In Europe, you'll be just another little girl. 
Don't you think they might have heard of me at all? I'm afraid not. They certainly wouldn't be interested in the case now. It's a shame that that gasoline container didn't work out as a clue. Imagine. If you suddenly came up with a new clue. Something important. Yes. Think of the scene at the dock aboard ship just before you sail. Every New York newspaper, every worldwide press association taking pictures, interviews. You'd probably even be on television. Yeah. It wouldn't end there. When you docked at Le Havre, the same thing would start all over again. European press representatives, photographers, and you signing autographs in Paris and tea. Oh, too bad. <laughs> would have been such a thrill for you. There must be more clues. There must be. Where? We can't go around digging up the front yard. <laughs> other places. Other places. There must be. There's got to be. Maybe it's something that happened the night of the murder. I think I, Jennifer. After Taylor awakened you, what do you remember? It was horrible. My father was dead. I was all alone in the world. How did it happen? There must be a clue. I think hard, Jennifer. We've got to find that clue. Maybe it had something to do with Lisa or Taylor. Lisa was out that night. She said she came back after the fire. Was that the truth? Let me think. No. She came back before the fire started. I saw it from the window of my room. She went into the garage, came out with gasoline. I wanted to stop her, but I was frightened. I hid into my blanket. She went to Father's room, poured the gasoline, set it afire. It was horrible! My poor father lying there asleep, unsuspecting. And those beautiful black silk pajamas I gave him for Christmas. The only person who would have known what your father was wearing was the person who was in the room that night. Jennifer finally found a way to help her stepmother. 